Sorry to disturb you. These officers wanted to talk. The name's Yabu. I'm with the Odonati Police Department. Can I have a minute of your time? The police? Huh. See here, Kuno Seisan, or is it Hitoshi? It's Totono, sir. Kuno Totono. <laughs> what kind of name is that? Hey, quit it. So, Kuno-san, where were you at 10 p.m. last night? Huh? At home? Why? I'm actually in the middle of making curry, so it smelled wonderful. Alone? That's right. Hm. I did notice the ruckus this morning. Did something happen in the neighborhood? A body was discovered at the park nearby. Sagai Ken. You know him, right? Sagai. He goes to my university. You don't seem too surprised by his fate. I'd like to ask you some questions. Will you come with me to the station? Why? I barely even know him, and I don't know anything about what happened to him. Just come with me, will you? Okay, just a sec. I have to turn off the stove. Huh, <sighs> how disappointing. One of the fan-favorite writers whose shoujo and jose work include renowned manga such as There Goes Tomoe, Basara, Chicago, Seven Seeds, and many more. Yumi Tamura has won multiple Shogakugan manga awards throughout the years. Her library is diverse and rich in character studies, mystery, action adventure, romance, the list goes on. But for this video, we will shift our focus to one of Tamura's recent creations, don't call it mystery. In it, we follow Totoro a young man who stands out partly for his bushy hair, partly for his finely honed abilities of observation and deduction. When Totono is accused of murder, he puts his skills to work delving into the lives of the cops investigating him and uses his insights to find the real murderer. So I gotta be honest here, I went in completely blind when it comes to this book. I had heard the hype, I believed it, I know of Yumi Tamura's pedigree as a creator. However, what I didn't know was how much I ended up loving these first four chapters. I can't wait to get volume two so I can continue the story. I really took a liking to the characters and was charmed by the simplistic yet pretty artwork presented throughout, because at times it can be highly detailed and other times slightly comedic with some funny faces and expressions which obviously accentuate the mood and the jokes that are being told, or at least the funny scenarios that are being presented I should say. So yeah, don't call it mystery, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, stars the character of Totoro Kuno, just a college kid that loves curry and just somehow is thrown into these weird circumstances where detective work and his keen observation skills are pretty integral to solving cases. He's not a detective, he's not a police officer, he's just a college kid. And I find that to be one of the most charming aspects of the book, that he's just a regular guy. He happens to be super skilled in this particular area, but it's not that he chose that route things just sort of fell on your lap. And I guess that happens to a lot of us in life. Things just sort of happen when you least expect it, and his inquisitive nature leads him to solve different scenarios. In the case for this first chapter here, it's actually going to help him clear his name after being accused of murder. But before I dive deeper into the story aspect, a lot of people warned me that this was going to be a heavy, dense read, and I was a little bit put off by it at first because I didn't know what I was getting myself into. But as as soon as I started reading, everything just flows nicely together. Tamuda has a way with dialogue and characters. Yes, it is dense, but it flows naturally and you pick up a pace as you're reading and everything just sort of speeds up and once you know it, you're finishing up the first chapter. So in that aspect, I really enjoyed uh, Don't Call It Mystery. The first story, like I mentioned in the description and just now, involves the main character getting accused of murder because he is somewhat related to the victim. He is asked to go to police headquarters and the detectives and officers there interview him and grill him non-stop wanting to get that confession because they are 100% dead set on incarcerating Totono for something that he may have not committed. Obviously, we kind of know going in that he's going to free himself. I mean, we see that in the description of the book. One of the key aspects for this character of Totono Kuno is his observation skills like I've mentioned and how he is often questioning things taken for granted in society. You first see this in this opening chapter but that is an integral part of who he is and the stories that soon follow. Chapter 2 is the longest story in this book and it deals with a bus hijacking and Totono is part of it by accident. Then in chapter 3 we get the resolution for that and chapter 4 leads us into a new story arc and how it is in 
involved with what came before and what's going to happen after, which I really liked. I thought going in, this was just going to be a drama of like solving cases and every chapter was going to be a different story, similar vibes to, and I know this is an unfair comparison, but let's think to Detective Conan or Case Closed, where yeah, you have these characters, but the majority, the bulk of the story is just solving cases. I thought this was going to be like that. However, I was pleasantly surprised to see that the stories or the narrative weaves through each chapter and there are hints of bigger things at play and different characters do keep showing up in different aspects of the story. I really enjoyed that. It made it feel more fleshed out and lively and not just characters on a desolate backdrop. The art for Don't Call It Mystery is fantastic. I really enjoyed when it goes into like full detailed mode and you get a nice view of each character and their defining traits and facial features and all that stuff. But it's not afraid to cut loose when it's making some silly jokes and having some fun with that. You get some chibi-esque expressions, which were a little bit weird at first, especially with the tongue flicking on some characters. I thought that was a little bizarre, but it brings its charm and it makes it stand out. So. Yeah, I really enjoyed that book artistically. I love the characters, their narratives. I love that even if you're not going to see this character again, there's so much dialogue happening because again, this is not an action heavy series. You really learn about them and they make lasting impressions from the bad guys to good guys to neutral individuals. They all have a story to tell. And I think Tamura has a natural way of making that dialogue happen and be as smooth as possible. I, I enjoy a book that can go the slice of life route while interjecting mystery, drama, crime, all that fun stuff. I really do enjoy it. Okay, so I didn't really want to spoil things. I just gave you sort of my uh, first impressions and my uh, thoughts and mini review on this part one of Don't Call It Mystery, a really lovely book. I can't wait to read volume two and volume three that is also scheduled for uh, the end of this year. Super excited about all of that. Thank you everybody for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. This video was a little bit different than the norm. Tried to mix up a couple things from voiceover work to actual reviews to first impressions all that fun stuff. So it can be a little bit nerve wracking. This took me a little bit to construct and put together. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment section. Give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. Subscribe if you haven't to the channel. That would be even greater. Thank you everybody for tuning in. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.